Hello there. Sorry, I was just doing some reading before we get started because we're going to be talking about the LAB color space today when it comes to creating a dynamic and contrast and orange and teal color grade. Um, there's a lot to fill up in this episode and I'm really excited. I've been looking forward to it. Um, and you might be curious about what it takes to create an orange and teal look, or you've probably seen a lot of different YouTube videos explaining how to properly do it. That requires a lot of keying and masking, things that won't work really well when it comes to look development. And that's where LAB comes into play because that is a new color space that I've been working in lately. And it is probably the most dynamic way of creating the orange and teal look without having the image break apart. Um, so in this video, we're going to be diving into what Orange and Teal is, um, how we created it. We just launched a brand new LUT pack called Faction, uh, and this one is pretty awesome, honestly. And what goes behind it and what goes into this is, um, I think, one of the best ways of creating an Orange and Teal look, honestly. Uh, I've been researching a lot of different ways on how to approach it, and that's where I was led to the LAB color space. Um, and we're going to be going over that. We're going to be going over a very advanced power grade as well um, and show you how we kind of created these LUT packs. Um, and we just want to give you um, a glimpse into some of the LUT creation that we've been working over here at Gamut. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into um, identifying uh, the orange and teal look and kind of where and how this journey started for us as we developed this look. So, um, so first off, Whenever we're looking at uh, the orange and teal color, whenever it comes into play, a lot of that comes down to our skin tone. Um, our skin tone is uh, orange in this area. The contrasting opposite color is going to be teal here in blue. And you can see here on the vector scope that this orange area is where our skin. So naturally, if you want the most um, contrasting color, the opposite color of that is going to be in the teal range. Just like I have here in my studio, um, I have a section where my skin is being illuminated by a warmer tone. And then behind it, is blue light. And this is going to allow my skin tone to pop even more um, from the background because I have this opposite color in play. So that is where um, orange and teal kind of um, really shines. And there's uh, obviously a lot of different movies that showcase orange and teal. And here are just a few um, that I'm going to be looking at. We have past lives that have in this shot, we have a really great um, teal background, but then also the skin is more warm and yellow. Uh, we also have lighter colors um, in the cooler areas, like in Ozark and stuff. Uh, Walter Mitty um, has some really strong orange skin tones with a lot of contrasting uh, teal in the shadows. And then we have, you know, the creator, which has more of that orange and teal, but it kind of leans more yellowy. Uh, and then John Wick, obviously this is the most possible color separation you can have in this shot right here. And then we have some um, cooler colors in the highlights. So these are a lot of different um, use cases where I was using as inspiration whenever we were creating a LUT pack. Um, so we eventually went ahead and made our own LUT pack called Faction. And um, we ended up going with about six different um, LUTs. And each one has a unique um, use case, and I'll be going over that later in detail. But for the majority of it, I really wanted to work on a look that had um, really good skin tones, but also really great blues and teals and like shadows, highlights, and then also really compress some of the colors into this uh, color scope spectrum for orange and teal. And a lot of that was not possible with RGB um, for look development. And the reason for that is because. Uh, you have to usually do a lot of keying or masking in order to kind of create that look. So we're going to go ahead and dive in to what it took to kind of create this look. But first, I want to show you um, some shots here where if I just add one of the, the LUTs to it, you can see I have a lot of these different clips that have already been corrected and they're already... Um, uh, properly adapted from their color space into a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 um, color space. And then we can add these LUTs, which are expecting Rec. 709. And then you can see that, I mean, we have get a really great um, orange and teal look. 
And this is just one of the six LUTs and we'll be kind of be breaking down what makes them unique. But the problem that I had was whenever we first were starting to um, look into creating this orange and teal look, a lot of the ways that people would do that is they would come over here to their primaries, come over to the lift and kind of push down into this, this teal range. And then they would compensate with their gamma and kind of warm it up, make sure the skin tones are back there. Maybe the gain could either be cool or warmer depending on which direction they wanted to go. And then they would come over and then um, a beginner would probably select the skin tone. We're just going to highlight that skin tone. Just kind of get a good, a very rough key here, and then we're going to just kind of blur that um, key to kind of get a little bit more uh, nuance in it. And oops, let me undo that shot right there. Pull that up to get a key, and then we can also just turn that off. But we would come over here and then just in, inver, in, invert that key, and then you would have the skin tone contrasting that. Obviously, this is a horrible key showing you what the context is for people creating orange and teal looks is they would just separate out the skin tone so that they could kind of control it. Um, but in this case, whenever you would take that and then you would look at other shots, it might look good on a couple things, but then you would come across other shots and it wouldn't look that good. And when you're working with look development like we do, you don't want to work with any keys or masking. You can't really adapt those into LUTs anyway without causing a lot of artifacting. So we wanted to come up with another workaround that would work really well with orange and teal. And that's whenever we stumbled upon the LAB color space. And the way we did that is um, I was doing a lot of research for this and there is a great blog post called um, Demystify Color. Demystify Color is another great resource if you're looking to learn a lot about um, different uh, resources for color grading and DaVinci Resolve um, and film profiling and stuff like that. But one of the articles is about the LEB color space and uh, it kind of opened my eyes because they were talking about how they can create a really great orange and teal look because of the color scheme differences. And I was like, well, let me look into that. And then later on, I went ahead and bought a book all about the LAB color space, uh, which is for Photoshop, but then is adaptable with all the information that can be used in DaVinci Resolve. And honestly, I'm blown away by what we can do in the LAB color space. Not many people are really utilizing it. They're utilizing it mainly for sharpening and blurring and stuff, but the way that you can really expand and create a lot of color separation is way better in LAB than it is RGB. And we're gonna be going over that in just a little bit. But if you want access or resources to learn more, I highly recommend you checking out Demystify Color. It's a great resource um, and uh, I just wanted to plug that because I'm really stoked on it and I learned a lot through it. But back to our session here. Uh, so, so that's kind of how people would kind of create that. So that started getting me down the road of, all right, let me look into LAB. So if we want to understand LAB, we first need to um, recognize how things are different than what we're normally working in. So in the LAB color space, um, it stands for, uh, you know, L star, A star, B star is another way of, uh, the proper way of saying it. Um, but in our traditional sense, we have red, green, and blue, RGB, that will make up our color. With LAB, the L channel is all for luminance. So it's almost as if you're using the, um, the Luma channel here for your curves. It's going to respond very similar to that. And then all the color is in the A and the B channel. Um, so it's separated, which is really helpful. Um, and then the A channel is going to make up the axis of magenta and green, um, contrasting colors. And then the B channel is the contrasting colors is yellow and blue. And yellow and blue is very helpful when it comes to creating an orange and teal look because of that color separation. So here's a couple ways to get started with LAB. Um, the first thing that I would recommend is creating a node and you can right click and go over to color space and then you can go down to LAB. So the C, uh, the C lab color space. So now we are in the LAB color space. So what that means is our red channel is now L the G channel is now A, and the B channel is still B. So just like if we wanted to change contrast, if we're taking, let me go ahead and expand this a little bit bigger for us all to see. 
I think this will be helpful. Let me just get this dialed in here. So the red channel. The red channel is going to be luminous. So I can create an S curve that will not be adjusting any color, but will mainly be adjusting the luminance here, okay? So we can kind of work through that. Now in the green channel, again, if you push up, just grab a point and push up, it is going to be introducing magenta. If you pull down, opposite color is green. So think of it as the positive um, is going to be warmer colors, the negative is going to be cooler colors, okay, which is green. And then if we have blue, Blue is cool, so that means if we pull it down, it's going to be blue. If you push it up, it's going to be warm. It's going to be yellow. So just keep that in your head whenever you're using curves. Also, curves is going to be the best way to really manipulate the colors in the LAB color space. Um, because LAB technically contains four colors, M, R, G, B, Y. So magenta, um, green, blue, and yellow. Uh, and that's how we're able to really work with this opposite spectrum of color and whenever you're creating a orange and teal look this is going to be a really easy and effective way to create that separation without having to do any keen so let's go ahead and try to do this one clip using only the lab color space and we're just going to reset the luma channel we're not even going to mess with it right now let's just go through the green channel and because we're working differently you can manipulate the curves and make some crazy shapes and it still will hold pretty good. So we're gonna just pull the green channel over here and then we're gonna evenly disperse it. And then we'll do the same with blue. So if we match the blue with green, then you're only gonna have, there's gonna be no color split toning or anything. All you're gonna be getting is more saturation and density. So if we just, before and after this, you can see we haven't changed any of the luma values, it's only the density and saturation. Um, and the way it creates density is pretty powerful. So I really like the way the LAB color space processes this. Now, if we looked at this image, we noticed that, at least I do, maybe on your screen it looks a little bit different. We have some really strong reds around nose and, and ears here. So the reds or magentas is going to be in the green channel or the A axis here. So um, we're gonna take the green and we're gonna lock the midpoint here, okay? Because we don't wanna change this middle gray area here. And because magenta is positive and we know the skin tone is probably right around here-ish, we're gonna just pull this back and you can see, you could pull it all the way here and desaturate it a little bit. But that is going to take back some of that saturation while still keeping the density elsewhere. And then if we have skin tone feeling too yellow, well, that's in the blue channel. Let's lock the blue channel. Let's just pull the highlights back a little bit. And you can see right here that it's squeezing together a little bit more. So there we have, we haven't even added any color or split toning, but right now we're getting way more depth to the shot already. So now if we wanna add blue to the shadows, let's go ahead and take this blue and let's pull it down here because this is where the blue range is. We can kind of get a little bit strong. And if we want the greens, we can take the greens. Remember, if we pull it down, it's going to be more green, or we can push them up. So you can see how we're manipulating the colors here to kind of create a strong, strong look right here. And then we could also pull the green back if we wanted to. We could also pull the blue and just kind of just mess around and have fun. And this is a really great way to create a nice look. So maybe I don't want so much saturation closer to the middle point on the green channel. Um, so I'm just gonna mess around with it there. And then we could also start split toning by taking this middle section. So let's go over to the blue channel. And if I pull this down, we're gonna start getting cool look all over the place. Here's warm over there, a cool look right here. Maybe we want it cool here and then it kind of warm real quick. And we can pull this up so it's not so intense if we want to. We can kind of make different points. You can push and try to break it a little bit, but there's it's pretty pretty good whenever you're wanting to work with this LAB color space. So um, again, probably a little bit too much yellow on the top, so let's take the blue channel and just pull that down and then maybe the green let's add a little bit more 
magenta back to it. And so there's before and after. And that is just playing with two curves. And we're able to have such separation between the skin tone and the background. And then whenever we want to look at how this responds to other shots, let's go ahead and look and see if it breaks like it did the last time. Wow, it, it did not break this, but we notice that the blue is pretty strong. So this purple is changed to blue. So that's probably a little bit too strong here. We can see this jacket. So let's go back into LAB. And I think this one's going to land probably right around here. So let's lift up. So if you see if I pull it down, it's really introducing a lot of blues there. Let's pull it up. Let me make another point and just kind of control how intense I want this blue to come through. And then I could also use the green if I wanted to introduce a little green down there. And that feels a little better. So then we come over to the shot. Instantly, it's now working on a lot more shots. Also, purple is a very difficult color to work with in the LED color space because of where the line is between blue and purple. It is going to bend a little bit more, so you have to, it's, you have to be way more nuanced when you're working through that separation. And you can see how it's leaning out closer to the middle gray, but as it gets more color, um, it's going to pull to the blue. So that's where we would have to just finesse it more and kind of get some really good results that are pleasing to what we're looking for. But when you you know take a look at this shot, we're getting some really interesting looks that are much more difficult to get in uh, RGB. And I think this is what we're going to kind of be leaning into. So this is one of the routes whenever we're working with LAB. Uh, another way to kind of create this dynamic, um, this orange and teal look, is to really take the colors and shift the scope to be more elliptical. So in this case, we have this shot. And this uh, other way of creating orange and teal, I've learned from another resource called Mononodes. So if we switch over to here, um, Mononodes is another great resource. I actually own a, a couple of these products, but um, the creator goes through and reverse engineers grades and has a really great res like results. Like these look absolutely phenomenal. And part of it is you looking at the film print stock. And then also the big thing is how you identify and work with the RGB matrix. Um, and then also the hue and offset. So I'm going to go ahead and show you um, some of those ways on how you can manipulate and get the results that you want. So the first thing is on the RGB mixer, we're going to come over here to our RGB mixer down here. We're going to go ahead and um, change our blue output from zero or from one to zero. Let me just get this dialed in. And then we're going to set our green channel to one. And then just make sure our blue is all the way set to zero. So if you can see on our scope right here, we pretty much eliminated one of the entire colors. And so we went from this spread to this spread. <clears throat> and it forced everything in that window. Then what we can do is we can come over to our offset hue, and then we can come over <clears throat> and change our hue to point more towards our skin tone. Okay? So now we have literally the opposite colors. But this is a little more extreme than what we're wanting to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the RGB mixer and we're going to open it up by like turning down the key output gain for that effect. And if you, let me change this so that you can see the vector scope. So whenever we change our output and we turn it down, let me get this dialed in because my mouse is acting up weird. All right. It wants to go down by one. <laughs> um, whenever you bring it down, it's going to open up that scope and it's going to be really powerful with how it's being manipulated and everything. All right. Well, we're going to work on why my mouse is not working at all. Apologize on this. Um, so that is really weird how 
my screen might be messing up a little bit. So it's like every time I click it, I just get one little mouse and then my mouse shows up somewhere else. So um, probably because I'm sharing my screen on four different screens right now. Anyway, so that is how we're going to be able to set that up and spread out that image. And that scope is just going to contain those outside colors that we saw. So over here, you see a lot more on the purple range. It's going to kind of squish it into that scope, which is going to be very powerful. Um, and it's going to be super helpful. So that is one of the features that is really nice. Can't even, can't even type in it. All right, I'm going to move on. Just know that you can do this and you're going to get better results than I do. Um, and then, so that's that's option two. So the first one we just did the classic LAB color space, which is splitting it up into three channels, um, L, A, B, and, uh, and working with your colors that way. Then you also have the RGB mixer with a hue and offset that will allow you to kind of hone in those color ranges, which is part of the look that we did as well. We changed how intense we wanted to squeeze the the colors together. And then we're going to go into this new one. This is called Jacob's Ladder. So stick around with me for a little bit because this one's going to get a little bit nerdy, but this is absolutely powerful. And if you want access to this power grade, again, I highly recommend you subscribe to Demystify Color Blog. This is where I got it. And it is it looks daunting, but man, whenever you start using it, it's extremely powerful. So we're going to go ahead and show our compound node. Let me make some space over here. It looks like everything is getting wonky on my screen. So don't freak out. Don't freak out. I'm going to kind of clean it up a little bit. All right. So what this is doing is taking LAB, the traditional route, and just making it even more insane. So we're coming into the LAB color space and we're going out the LAB color space. In between, we're doing a splitter combiner node that is splitting the L channel into three separate ones, splitting the A into three separate ones and the B into three separate ones, then combining them all and then using a layer mixer in order to compressing them all back. And this was created by um, the, the person that created this power grade that's listed in that blog post uh, by Demystify Color is the person that came up with this and adapted it from Photoshop into Resolve. But if we look at it, we're going to see something very different. And you're going to notice that the curve is in the middle and then slightly down on the right side. And what they've done is split everything out. So now we're doing Luma versus Luma, Luma versus A, and Luma versus B. And this is all where the magic happens. And it's just so cool. Now, I'm still learning how to really get the most out of it, but this is where the majority, like 70% of the looks that I created for Faction was using this power grade. So if we want to come into, say, the blue channel, let me just switch this over to waveform. Um, there we go. Uh, the blue versus blue. So if I take this and I just pull this down, you can see it's just moving everything. But if I want to lock it in the middle and then pull the blue, it's going to be really finessing the blue. And then up here, it's going to be really finessing some of those warmth looks. Okay. I don't want to move the middle point unless I want to add some kind of split toning going on around the, the gray area. So we have this one. Then we have B versus A. So let's see what this one does. And you can see this is where it's going to really hone in the skin tone. So if you want more of those oranger skin tones, you can see I'm dialing it right there. And then I can push this and it leans more towards teal. If I want uh, the A versus B, I'm trying to remember this one was... This one really hones in skin tone as well. I like the way this one responds. And then I would use this to just take that green and move all that green down to blue. Because I'm taking the green spectrum, because it's A versus B, which is green versus blue, and really honing in on that look. So what's really tough though is when you're working with um, this particular power grade, you can't disable any nodes and see the difference. So if I disable it, it's gonna show me the, the actual effect of that node because it needs to pass through everything. So you won't be able to A, B it. The way you're going to have to do it is you're going to have to go back and just click right here. And when you click, like you're going to disable it or disconnect it, that's how you're going to do your, do your before and after. It's a weird workaround for now. Um, 
but that's how you work through it. And then if we want to have a warmer tone in the highlights, we can just push this right up here. Look at that separation we're getting already there. It looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, and then we can just really keep working and, and finessing this color and getting that, like, you can create some crazy looks, but also it's not really breaking apart, and it's awesome. So if you're interested in creating an orange and teal look, I highly recommend playing with this power grade because this is unfreaking believable. Um, so, and then you can change your Luma. So now your Luma versus your A. So again, magenta skin tone is going to be pushing the highlights up brighter. And then also the B, I'm going to do that for the yellow. It's going to lift that up as well. You can see that glass coming down or I can darken it. So it's got so much power that you can do in this look. And this is where I created the majority of the look development for faction. Um, and it, it just created some really powerful, really powerful looks. So I'm very pleased with the results that we got from this. And uh, you can see before, so you can't disable it. Like I said, you have to disconnect it in order to see the difference. Okay. And then if we compare it with, so I can, again, I have to I disconnect it because I messed with it. And then we can turn on our faction light. So this is our look. I'm going to add a little texture. And you can see this looks pretty good, where immediately it had a great solid look. You get this depth in the greens. Let's look at the scope. So you can see how everything's kind of squished together in that more elliptical spa uh, scope, which is what we want for a dynamic orange and teal look. And let's take a look at some of these shots, because I think this is what really makes this look. So here we have a clip, and I'm going to open this up a little bit more. And we can see right here we have Faction 1. So Faction 1 is going to have a lot more of that yellowness in the highlights, uh, and then it's going to have more yellow in skin tones. And this one's really good whenever you kind of want some really great contrast, um, where the highlights it feels almost like it's got this tenant look a little bit. Um, and it's just really nice, especially if you're lighting skin tone and you're lighting with um, contrasting color. It's going to pop really well. We have this shot where you can see how it looks really nicely. And then if we wanted to take a look at Faction 2. So Faction 2 is going to be clean whites. This one is where you can see that we just cleaned up all those highlights, but we have really great contrast and skin tone, and then we have really great depth in the blues and the shadows. Um, the difference between one and two, you can kind of see how that ranges. And when we're looking at our scopes here, when we're using the waveform and we're looking at the, the wide channel here, we can see that we're getting clean whites up here, we're still getting strong skin tones, and then we're getting all this cool and teal blues in the shadows, which is what we want. So I mean, when you look before, and after, way more prominence in the teal range. Um, this shot, obviously, it's already lit so good. So even if you added contrast, you already had those colors. But look at the scope over here. You can see how it's leaning blue. We're going to pull that towards teal. And Faction 3 is going to be even more dynamic, like super strong teals. Um, and then more magenta skin tones. Um, but it looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, faction 4 is going to be the most gentle, and this is what's going to work on probably the most footage. So because orange and teal is a very stylized look, um, some scenes are not going to look that great in it. If you're using Faction 4, it's going to place the scope really well. You're going to get some warmth to it, and you're going to get some subtle nuance in that orange and teal, but this one's going to probably work the most out of all the LUTs. Uh, and then if we want to go with a shot like this so or even here so we have this clip and we want to have more of that ozark look or those really cool tones that's where faction five comes in and if you see faction five i mean when you look at the before and after and you want to talk about color separation look at this scope look i mean this is like perfectly opposite but all the highlights and, and the shadows are going to lean teal, and then it's going to leave skin tone nice and contrast orange. And it's going to create a really powerful look. Um, this one is really stylized and really cool, but it creates a really interesting mood and vibe. Even here, if you wanted to, you can see how the blues are pushed into the spectrum there. 
looks fantastic on these clips, uh, honestly. So I love that one. And then the latest one that we added, which is Faction 6, uh, this one is going to be probably our strongest orange and teal look. Uh, this one was probably going to have the most saturation and density to it. Um, the skin tones are going to lean more orange. And then we really worked hard on getting purple to be dialed in. So if you look at all the LUTs and look at how purple is displayed, that is a difficult one to finesse. And we did a lot of finessing in order to kind of keep that from falling apart. And I just love how this looks. So you can see, man, this looks fantastic. So this one, I'd say Faction 6 looks really good. I, I love Faction 6. And you can see the density in this fire is just powerful. And then you have this section up here where the blues are contrasting. Looks absolutely fantastic. So if you want anything for music video or commercial style look and you're really wanting to hone in and get that dynamic look without your image falling apart and you want repeatable results because that's the biggest thing is you could do keen and you could kind of make your own orange and teal look but you want it to work across all of your footage right and i mean this is the quickest route that you could do is is go with this LUT pack we've fine-tuned it for all these type of environments i mean if you look at this shot right here we can have this really depth and yellow um, look but then you can also have this teal coming through really nicely so there's just so much here to kind of go through and show examples but these are some of the sections that I wanted to showcase I mean you have this clip right here before and after and our eyes are going to skin because of that color contrast that we have um, this one might be really good for the third version too if you want even more um, and it holds up really well, close to skin tone and everything. Um, shot of Mr. Eric Floberg, and this just looks so good. Immediately his skin pops from this background because of this blue and teal going into the shadows, um, but still holding together the skin tone really well. We've got a shot of, oh, he just looks so good. Just look at him. So <laughs> this is a shot that I got of Eric um, a couple years ago, and... I mean, even his eyes pop and just pull out right there. We could go Faction 2, get even more contrast on that skin. We could get a little more stylized yellow highlights. And then we could have this cool rendition. But overall, I mean, if you want to look like Eric Floberg in your videos, you need to be getting this LUT pack. I'm just saying. Um, so he's got great colors here in these shots. So, all right. Sweet. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hop over and see if we have any comments. So I know that I was having some issues earlier today, so I apologize with that. Um, but I'm going to kind of look over some of the questions real quick. Thank you all again for joining. And again, um, we have the Faction LUT pack that is 15% off. We have that link in the description for you all. But um, let's see... Okay, so let's see. The Blockbuster Cinema film look. Finally, everyone has been longing for this. <laughs> Can you do this in Premiere? So, Greg Shaw, with Premiere, you would have to switch into the LAB color space, which I don't think there is a color space available for um, Premiere Pro. I need to look into whether you can make a LUT into a color space and come out of it. I think it's going to be very limited. But, so it's going to be more difficult unless you have that. That's why Resolve, being able to switch into that. Photoshop lets you do it too. So you can go into Photoshop, switch into LAB, and use your curves the same way, and that's another way that you can kind of grate and get that. Um, is this power grade available in the Faction Pack? So we don't have the power grade in the Faction Pack, partly because I'm using that power grade that someone else made and I don't want to sell that for one thing. I want to encourage you all to go use, utilize that feature. Also, I'm using a couple DCTLs for small things like saturation. There's a couple contrast nodes that I did, just slight contrast adjustments or slight density or saturation stuff that I'm using DCTLs that I can't put in a power grade because I don't own those as well, and I, and I bought those. But inside that power grade, the Jacob's Ladder, I think I probably created... 75% of the look is there. And then I have that hue or the RGB mixer and then the offset hue 
and and I changed the intensity for each look on how far I wanted to squeeze those colors into that spectrum. And then I had a couple contrast curve, or just one contrast curve to decide on overall how I wanted to do it. I did use the Luma curve, obviously in the power grade. And then what else did I have? That was pretty much all that's encompassed in it, but I don't have it in a power grade feature just because I'm utilizing other people's um, created products and I don't want to sell that because I, I can't. <laughs> um, which is why I made it very repeatable in LUTs though. Um, and maybe I make, I think I can turn this LUT, the LUT pack to be used in DaVinci Wide Gamut color space as well so that you can stay in a wider color space while still applying it instead of applying it to Rec. 709. So if you want that, let us know and we'll see if we can adapt these LUTs for you all there. Um, Let's see, can you post a link to the blog referenced? Yeah, so Greg, I will go ahead. I know I mentioned in the video, um, I'll make sure that I copy and, and mention mono nodes and demystify color. They're gonna be um, where you can get access and once you subscribe, you can just search LAB um, and you'll be able to see the blog article that I'm referencing there. You can also pick up this book. I mean, this book I got and it seems very outdated, but it is going through all these unique things that you can do and uh, even down to sharpening, how to get the most color separation, how to use it. And I'm taking the knowledge I have here and applying it into DaVinci Resolve. So you can also buy the book. It's called Photoshop Lab Color, The Canyon Conundrum and Other Adventures in the Most Powerful Color Space by Dan uh, Margulis. I think is how you say his name. Um, sweet. Let me see what else. Um... I think I may even create some Lightroom profiles using these Q files. Yeah, so in, in Lightroom, you can load a LUT as a profile and get access to that. Uh, so you could probably get some really good results in there as well, which I think would be great. Um, let's see. Yeah, I know Greg's like, I guess it's time to switch to DaVinci. Um, there is some definite advantages for complex grading that you can have there. Um, uh, did you also work on the kinetic pack? Really great work. Yes, we did uh, work on the kinetic pack. Um, and that one, um, we utilized a couple other things that we can't turn into a power grade because of some products, some DCTLs and stuff. But again, that one we worked on and collaborated with uh, another colorist that got us probably... 70% of the way there and then we tweaked and worked on some other things because um, we have a team that we use whenever we're working with with LUTs so that one I um, I helped with uh, I didn't create from scratch and then this one I did create from scratch uh, so a lot of different LUT packs I'm usually touching them in some way um, and working through them but yeah thanks for asking that um, and then someone said, but they really need and buy the power grade forever. Yeah, so we have two power grades now on Gamut, which we're going to start adding more. We have Orion by uh, Jake, JVKE, and then we also have Reverie by Brady Bassett, which was launched last week. And also, whenever I'm using my texture node that you probably saw, um, I'm utilizing uh, Brady's 35 millimeter power grade that we have in there. So I'll sometimes use his power grade for the setup because it's super like effective and powerful and then I can just change for different LUTs if I want to use his looks or if I want to adjust and make our own but the power grade is absolutely phenomenal um, worked with Brady on that and he created some really great um, grain emulations that looked really fantastic so I'm using that and Halation um, for more of those texture nuances but if you want to check out any power grades that we offer for Gamut right now Orion and um, Reverie are those two packs, which I highly recommend checking out those two because they are also really great looks that we um, have looked into. So anyway, uh, everybody, I think this is it. If you have any questions, we're going to have um, a link that you can go ahead. If you follow our newsletters, this is where we're going to um, allow people to ask questions, but also we're going to let people know ahead of time what we're talking about so that you can join in. Um, we're going to let this video stay live too. I'm most likely going to make multiple videos discussing orange and teal in smaller forms that are digestible. I wanted this to be long form so that I could talk with you all, but also go through all the nuances that happen whenever you're creating this 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 cool look but there's a lot of other things that i'm learning in lab that i want to kind of showcase a lot of different um, ways on how you can create looks using the lab color space but hopefully in this video you learned something new i mean i feel like as i'm researching for each one of these episodes uh i'm learning something new and i'm always wanting to try to take 
um, interesting topics and uh, and learn them and study them and translate that um, to you all. So again, thank you all for joining. Um, if you're watching, please make sure that you're subscribing and uh, hit that notification bell because we're going to be trying to go live every week um, as long as we're in town and we're going to have new episodes um, every week. So this is episode six and um, we're really excited about the future and the things that we're going to be launching. We have a really exciting months ahead. So thank you all for joining today on this live and we'll, um, we'll see you in the next video, in the next live.